Number six, Jaws. Number six is Jaws because I'd say, well, you know, this movie was probably more intended as a thriller than it was a horror, but that's just my opinion. Jaws was definitely the best film that Steven Spielberg has ever directed, and it was one of his first, not literal first, because he did stuff when, when he was a kid with his family, because I've read biographies on him, because I'm a big nerd like that. He, was an inspir he is an inspiration to me, after all, so. And uh, he named his company, uh, what's it called? You know, with the little E.T. logo, Am Ambien, something like that, Am I, I, I just claimed that I was a big Steven Spielberg fan. I, Amblin, it's Amblin. Yeah, that was like his first budgeted picture, I believe. You can find it on YouTube. But, yeah, Amblin, the short film. With, believe, I think it has his sister in it. I think that was his sister. But, okay, but now I'm talking about a different movie. So, yeah, the movie stars Roy Scheider as Martin Brody, Robert Shaw as Quint, and Richard Dreyfuss as oceanographer Matt Hooper, and Quint's the shark hunter one, you know, if you don't know. Uh, the movie does build up a lot of suspense by not showing the shark until near the end of the movie. There's, you see tidbits of them in the middle of the movie, in the middle of the movie, but, you know, it's not like, you know, during this finale scene right here, uh, if you can see it. Uh, one of the reasons why it was shot like that was because it was a low-budget film, um, I can't remember the budget, but it was pretty low. Like, the sequels had higher budgets than this one, and yet they somehow had lamer effects, but the, that's beside the point. Um, there shouldn't have been sequels anyways, but... Uh, it was also shot like this, because it does make it a little more scarier. I mean, seriously, the movie doesn't really even start until those three guys are out on that boat in the middle of nowhere. But... You know, this is the stuff that leads up to that is I, I do like as well. A lot of people uh, that I know, anyways, say that stuff is boring. The conversations that the three main guys have, you know, uh, Roy, Robert, and Richard, boy, the three R's. You know, to me, actually, I don't really mind those scenes because I like the I actually do like the conversations those three characters have. Uh, they feel like. I don't feel like I'm watching characters, so I feel like this could be real people in this situation, in the middle of nowhere on a boat, with the shark not around yet, when they're just talking and stuff. Like, one of my favorite scenes, um, when they're talking, that, <clears throat> when they're talking, that is, is when Quint, you know, they were just got done showing off scars, which is kind of weird, but, and you know, whatever, they're, they're men. So, they got done showing off scars, and Quint's telling the story about how his uh it's really eerie by the way the way he tells it and the music that plays along with it about an encounter with a shark i believe it's his first encounter with a shark and you just have to listen to that story and the scene where they're singing show me the way to go home because i think they were drunk and you know acting silly and me and, and a group of friends whoever i'm with uh sometimes we'll sing that in like public restaurants just to be funny because we're just that nerdy, but that's beside the point. Uh, you know, but the best scene is obviously going to be the finale, which, you know, will just happen behind me. It's over now, but, um, where, you know, Brody is, he's, uh, you know, he's taking the shark on his own, because, uh, Matt, you know, Richard Dreyfuss is somewhere down the bottom. You're supposed to assume he's dead, but he's actually not. I might have spoiled it for some people. Oh well. Watch it anyways. And, you know, the ship or the boat was sinking. He only had like an air tank or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And that gun. And you, know, and you probably saw what happened behind me. But, you know, it's obviously a really kick-ass scene. Now, you know, obviously one of the best quotes of all time. Besides, you're going to need a bigger boat, would be, smile, you son of a bitch. But, another interesting thing about Jaws is, uh, two or three years ago, I think two, uh, I went on vacation to uh, Universal Studios in Florida, and we got, I got to ride the Jaws, it was the first time I've ever been, and I got to ride the Jaws ride, 
because I wanted the ride, the rides that were based off my favorite movies before anything else. And yeah, I got on the Jaws ride. I went on. I loved it so much that I, I, I even have a YouTube video of it. Um, you can look for it somewhere on my channel. Um, and when I got back from vacation, it was announced that they were going to replace the ride, and I had a kind of a touchy feely moment there because. Like wow, if I would have waited, if, we, if our family would have, you know, waited till like another year for this vacation or whatever, then I wouldn't be able to go on the Jaws ride, and I loved it. I went on it more than five times, believe it or not. And it's just a simple boat ride with, you know, like just props and stuff. But it was it was pretty cool. It felt like I was in the movie. Well, not in the movie, but in a movie. If I really wanted to feel like I was in the movie, I would rather much been a part of that little ending there, but that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a personal moment there. Number five is Gremlins. Now, this was actually one of the movies that caused the PG-13 rating to come into existence. So, if you didn't know that before, well this and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, but I'd say this was probably more risque. Well, I don't know, in Temple of Doom, you do see a guy's heart being pulled out of his chest, but that's besides the point. That's my favorite saying, isn't it? Gremlins is a horror comedy directed by Joe Dante. And if you've ever seen The Explorers, you'll see that his goofiness is kind of his trademark, in a way. At least, maybe not in all of his movies. I haven't seen all of his movies, to be honest, but, you know... It's not a bad thing that he's goofy, but, you know, this movie came out in the summer of 1984, despite the fact that the film, the setting in the film, it's Christmas, or, you know, it's a, almost Christmas, so, I guess you could argue that this is probably the best damn Christmas movie ever. Yeah. I, I, I watch it on Christmas. I, I'll watch it any, I'll watch it, I'm watching it right now, sort of, but, uh, Probably my favorite thing about Gremlins would be, uh, besides the writing and directing, uh, is the Gremlins themselves. Now, there was no CGI, computer graphic imagery. These were all puppets and animatronics. And, hell, in one of the scenes where the mom is fighting one of the Gremlins, you can see the string attached to its arm. But, you know, that doesn't ruin the movie for me, but... You know, I don't want to go into too much detail about this movie. This might be one of those movies everyone has seen as well, but if you haven't, watch it for the first time in the dark by yourself or with a group of friends, or even one friend, your parents, your, your pet goldfish, whatever. Uh, you will be shocked, both shocked, and laughing your ass off at the same time. Just look at this clip. Uh, watching an old lady die never has never been so hilarious. Number four, School of Rock, because me, as an avid listener, lover, appreciator of rock music, preferably classic rock, I had to put this film on my list. Um, because, well, you know, actually this might be like the least oldest movie on this list, considering it came out in 2003, but that's... You know, that's beside the point. I really gotta stop saying that. I will confess something, though. I wasn't always a uh, lover, listener, appreciator of rock music. Uh, let's just say, uh, while I did hear a, a good bit of rock music growing up, you know, I wasn't a fan. I was trying to be, you know, the cool kid, you know, whatever. And, you know, I listened to rap pop. And that's a dark part of my past I never want to relive or think about. But that's beside the point. So yeah, I didn't see this movie in theaters when I was a kid. I I believe it came out the same week of Finding Nemo, and I saw that. But, yeah, whatever. I didn't even see this movie for the first time until two years ago. And unlike every other movie on this list, I 
you know, I didn't grow up with watching this. I recently kind of saw it. And I'm sorry, I guess, but uh, it stars Jack Black as Dewey Finn, a guy who has recently been kicked out of his own band that he made, you know, and he's about to get kicked out of his apartment. He doesn't have a real job. Or, you know, what society is, thinks is a real job anyways, whatever. Uh, I hear screaming from the neighborhood kids outside, but that's beside the point. I, I hope they're having screams of joy, not terror, but... <laughs> um, so he gets, he's about to get kicked out of his apartment by his uh, friend's bitchy girlfriend, played by Sarah Silverman. Good choice for a bitchy girlfriend, by the way. Not that I hate her, but, you know, good choice. But... Posing as a substitute teacher for a fifth grade class, I believe, Dewey starts a band with these ten-year-olds, as you can see behind me, um, and he, cause after he discovers when they go to music class, he stops by, and they all play pretty well of whatever they're doing, at least, you know, they're not playing any rock instruments, but, you know, substitutes. Um, so, yeah. And he wants to. He he starts this band with them because obviously they're already better than him. But he wants to get sort of kind of want to get revenge on his previous band that kicked him out, trying to teach them a lesson by trying to win a battle of the bands. And well, I guess that might not be the most positive message, role model, whatever for any in this movie, but. You know, it's still something that, you know, I wish my school was this exciting. I wish rock history was a class. I would sign up for that. I mean, who wouldn't? Even if you hate rock music, it would probably be an easy A. But, you know, me personally, I wouldn't just be in it for the grade. Whatever. Um, one of the most interesting scenes of School of Rock would be um, Dewey teaching trying to teach the kids, because one of the, uh, um, what's her name, um, Miranda Cosgrove, this was before Drake and Josh, um, classic show, by the way, but, you know, she's the nerdy, kiss-ass type of student, so I guess, like, are you going to teach us something, and he, he, and he says, he gives, he gives a speech about the man, yes, and it's probably my favorite quote, or my favorite from the movie, my favorite speech, maybe. I've put that whole entire speech as a Facebook status one time, and I've even quoted it in real life in one of my classes. Uh, but that's... Let's not get into that. Um, and there's also a montage where the kids are watching, like, uh, you know, the drummer kid, Freddy. He's watching uh, Keith Moon from The Who. Or, you know, there's the Zach kid watching Angus Young from ACDC or Jimi Hendrix, Pete Townsend. Um, and while there's mon all this montage is going on, uh, Bonzo goes to Bitburg by the Ramones, a really great punk band from the 70s, uh, for those who didn't know. But, you know, that's playing over this montage. Now, this movie also shows probably one of the greatest covers ever of a rock song, especially due to the fact that most of them were, that were kids. And we're, the end scene, they're playing It's a Long Way to the Top If You Want to Rock and Roll by ACDC. Now, all these kids, uh, even Jack Black, except for the bass girl, uh, what was her name? Mm, Katie or something like that. Uh, she doesn't get a solo, but everyone gets a guitar, drum, keyboard, or vocal solo. I actually did read somewhere there was going to be a bass solo, but that got edited out for some reason because I guess it made it too long. But, you know, that would have been interesting to see. But, you know, if you're a Jack Black fan, or, you know, whenever Jack Black's in a good movie, that is, uh, or if you just love and appreciate rock music like I do, then School of Rock is probably for you. Because... Boy, do I wish this was a real class, a real school.